Hey there, boys and girls. Tim K here, founder of The Veterans Project and host of The Veterans Project Podcast. And I'm here to talk to you today about Oscar Mike Foundation. Now, Oscar Mike Foundation is a registered 501c3 public nonprofit, which was formed by Noah Courier, who was a wounded Marine uh, veteran who came back from Iraq and was in a tragic car accident, which left his spinal column crushed. Instead of sitting back in his bed and feeling sorry for himself, Noah started the Oscar Mike Foundation, and now they are striving to be the leading provider of funding for injured veterans so that they might participate in life-changing adaptive sports. Now, they also utilize uh, Oscar Mike's apparel sales to help with what they're doing with the foundation. So that's incredible. Let me tell you, having covered so many men and women who have made the testamental sacrifices that are required for this blood wall to keep our foundational freedoms intact, I could tell you that physical activity is such a massive part of getting back out there and getting back after it. Not only physically uh, healing, but mental healing is found through that. So Oscar Mike Foundation has gotten that right. You can head, you can head over to Oscar Mike Foundation. Dot org where you can learn more, uh, donate, find the links to their apparel sales so that you might help contribute to such an important um, foundation that's doing a lot for our veterans. Check it out, OscarMikeFoundation.org. Our next guest on the podcast is one of my favorite people in the world. He served as a Green Beret with 1st Special Forces Group, 10th Group, and in support of 3rd Group. He deployed to combat multiple times both Iraq and Afghanistan, and served on numerous J sets around the world. While serving as a Green Beret, he walked onto the University of Texas's football team, having never played a down of football in his life. That's pretty incredible. He went from that to starting for the Texas Longhorns for three years. He's since moved back to Los Angeles, where he helps out with some incredible nonprofits while acting and producing. You've seen him in Den of Thieves. You've seen him in 12 Strong. If you watch mine in season two, he's been in that as well. Now, we could brag on the man all day, but we'll let him do the rest of the talking for us. Here he is, the one and only Nate Boyer. The Veterans Project is a comprehensive essay capturing the legacies of our warfighters, caregivers, and civilians who have stepped forward in defense of our patriotic principles in an effort to capture their stories and to never forget the staggering sacrifices of our nation's finest. This is the Veterans Project Podcast, where our legacies are the mission. Here's your host, Tim K. Welcome to the Veterans Project Podcast. My name is Tim K, and I'm your host, We've got a special guest on today. Nate, if you could kind of introduce yourself. A lot of people know who you are by the project, but you know, you were a staff sergeant in the United States Army. You went through the 18 X-ray program into the Green Berets. Can you kind of talk about your path and what led you to, you know, join the special operations world? No, because I said I don't want to get on here <laughs> and tell my whole freaking story again, <laughs> Timothy. Come on, man. I know, I know. Maybe it. It now been, I'm on and I have to. Yeah, you but wrote it's me. a project podcast, bro. I get it. Yeah. But like, go to veteransproject.com yeah, yeah. and read it, <laughs> you lazy piece. <laughs> Speaking of lazy piece, I drove by today uh, mcdonald's on the way here yeah and it said now on uber eats and i was like wow Ooh. that is the definition of quitting yeah you know what i mean that's bad, you can order man. uber eats mcdonald's yeah i was like damn dude that's, that's bad, bad bro it's pretty bad yeah anyway I, I don't know what that's to do with anything <laughs> we're gonna start talking uh, about all the health and nutrition here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I joined the military in 2000 and, and early 2005, 2004, I actually signed up and went to basic in 2005, the 18x-ray program. Um, and I did it because I'd gone to, well, 9-11 had happened and I had started doing some traveling and I ended up working in the Darfur at the refugee camps for right. a couple of months. And that was like the main reason I wanted to join. I wanted to to fight for those people, people that can't fight for themselves and uh, work with uh, uh the developing world, indigenous forces, and that's what the special forces do. That's what the army special forces do, anyway. Um, De oppresso liber, which means to free the oppressed, is our motto. And um, yeah, I was in. I was inspired by not only that motto, but just uh, the opportunity to to serve in a in a unit like that, an elite level. And I was attracted to the challenge of it. Um, and I also knew that if I didn't make it, 
uh, it would be okay because I'd still get to serve in the army and I'd probably be in a kick-ass unit either way. So um, that was for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome, bud. Appreciate no, it. No, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. So I didn't really feel like, okay, well, if I don't make it, it's not like I'm out of the army. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I figured just go for it with that opportunity and that contract uh, that it, that had uh, been made available. And I ended up working out, man, and I loved most of it. <laughs> Some of it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're being honest here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, you know, the, the, we talk often in the project about reintegration. That's such a big part of life. And you now you're acting and you've got a bunch of different roles. You know, you're doing philanthropy and with different projects like Waterboys and MVP, Merging Vets and Players. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, go check it out. It's awesome. Google it. And Google it. <laughs> But there are so many incredible programs out there, and you're working with a lot of different, you know, things. But it's ta- it's been a path to get to where you're at, right? Like this has not always been pretty. I mean, can you talk about kind of your path a little bit before the army? You know, like being yeah. on the well, it's still not pretty now, but <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, man. oh, I think it looks good, man. Yeah, you don't know, you don't know the half of it, man. <laughs> no, it's uh. uh yeah, before the army, after high school, you know, I worked a bunch of odd jobs. I worked on a fishing boat for a bit. Um, I'd been I rode those little bike taxis down to San Diego for a little bit. I moved up to L.A. and I was interested in film and television at the time, but didn't really know how to pursue it. Worked odd jobs up here. Did have the the, the great fortune to uh, to get to work with uh, autistic kids when I was here, which I gained a lot of perspective from. Learned a lot um, from that. Uh, opportunity from that experience really of you know listening and trying to work with people that have a different perspective on things even though these are much these were much younger children right um, they just see the world differently man and so I had to try to constantly put myself in their in their shoes and in their mindset and try to think like okay why are they where are they coming from in this situation you know what I mean why are they emotional about this thing right. uh, when I don't see it as a normal thing to be emotional about because that's a great lesson for uh, being able to relate to the rest of the world. You know, when you have differences in cultures and customs, um, you know, such as serving overseas, yeah, uh, you have to be sensitive to that, but also like try to try to put yourself in, a, in somebody else's uh, situation and see it through their eyes. And um, anyway, that time out here was valuable in that regard, but. Also, what I mostly just did was, um, was I, you know, I partied a lot, um, no real purpose as far as like who I wanted to be, no real direction, um, just not happy, you know, and yeah. uh, I didn't really know it at the time, but it was probably like, you know, depression, I guess. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't really know, but, and I still, I think like everybody does, man, I have bouts with like, um, I think happiness is such a stupid term. <laughs> I don't think there's that. I think, I think it's unattainable. Like just, Oh, I'm ha- happiness. Like it's a, a thing, right? It's something I learned from Ryan leaf talking about that. Like you can experience joy and moments of joy and days and periods of time feeling happy, but it's a feeling. It's not a state. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, life is like, uh, just ups and downs, man. And hopefully, um, you're able to just understand that, re- realize that. And, uh, when you're in those downs, understand that an up is probably coming. Yeah, <laughs> and you don't need to facilitate it through, um, uh, you know, necessarily outside sources such as <laughs> narcotics or whatever. Right, you drugs, know what I mean? Yeah, all you that. Know? Yeah. Um, but kind of getting off topic a little bit here. But like, well, it's good. You know, but that's that's really what I just didn't realize that. You know what I mean? So I just I think I tried to always you know, patch up my downs with something else, you know, replace it with like an, something that didn't make me feel like myself. Right. You know, instead of just like being okay with it and trying to figure out, um, something to do an action, yeah. um, to, 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 to shift my mindset or, or, or get me out of that or, or focus on somebody else. And maybe like somebody that's in a worse, it may much worse situation than me and trying to help them out you know, that'll help alleviate that stuff. But you know, at the same time I was in my late teens and early twenties and that's just life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, totally. All my yeah. friends were off going to college and I just took a different path and it was 
challenging, but I chose it. And yeah. I can't really blame anybody. You know, the reason that I kind of asked you about that is I, I think that it's really easy uh, for our community, especially to kind of fall into that, right? Those quick hits, finding yeah. those quick hits of joy when you get out. There's really that struggle for a lot of guys, not everybody, but you know, there is a little bit of that struggle when you're trying to find your path, when you leave the military, mm -hmm. when you're, you know, thinking about that time in combat traumatic or not, um, you know, and getting out. So what, you know, what kind of led you to like get out of that? Was it, you know, joining the army at the time? Because the, you know, the reason I had to ask you that question before is those quick hits are so common. It's so common for people to feel that pain in this culture and then to immediately try to knock it out with something else, you know? Yeah, so, right, right, right. So what yeah. got you out of that? Um, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a tough question to answer because you're sort of asking, you know, even for me, like before I went into the military where a lot of these uh, situations, it's, it's common after the military, right? When they're, they don't have the team anymore and like right. the, that sense of purpose and everything. And But, you know, I will say, I always like to compare this to like something that has zero um, traumatic effects, such as uh, you know being a being a college student at a normal age, right, nineteen to twenty two or whatever. Right. And by the time you're junior or senior, first of all, you're super excited when you get there. Freshman year, everybody's excited. Oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And then you settle in. In sophomore year, you're like, yes, you know, grades are slipping. You're doing, you're partying too much, blah, blah, blah. In junior year, it's like, okay, I get this thing back on track and like figure it out. I don't know what it really, what I really want to do with my life like next. And then senior year, you're like, I just can't wait to get out of here. Like, I'm done with this. I want to go be a grown up now. Yeah. And then you're out, and like a year later, you're like, God, I miss college. Like, I miss <laughs> all those things. I should have enjoyed that. I should have done this. I should have done that. Yeah. And then blah, 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 blah. It's like, that's a very similar thing. That's just life. And like, this very similar thing happens with people in the military. Granted, yes, like, I'm not saying post traumatic stress is not a factor. Right. And that, uh, you know, combat is not completely different than an experience of going to college. Like, I, I, I know that they're very different. I was, doing both at the same time. Right. And obviously they were very different experiences, but um, I think that that makes it a little relatable to people because that, that's a common, that's a common thing with people in the military. I think like everyone's just, they can't wait to get out. They don't think about what they really want to do. They don't think about what's like next and the future. They just think, Oh man, once I'm out, it's going to be awesome because like, you know, I'll, 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 I'll either use my GI bill or, you know, everyone's going to want to hire me because I have this background and all these, you know, I can do whatever I want and blah, blah, blah. They don't actually think about what that is. Yeah. And they don't even try to figure it out. And they think we all have this, I mean, the grass is always greener, like no matter where we're going in life, we always think that like whatever we're shooting for is just going to be the answer to happiness, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, uh, it, it's, it's not that simple. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes things aren't, right for you like once you start doing them you're like ah, i actually don't like this <laughs> right i'm not yeah. really into this and uh, i think i was just doing a lot of that before the military right. you know what i mean i was like trying things i had this idea in my head of like oh if i could only do this or if i could only you know if i can get to this level of whatever it is mm -hmm. then like everything will be great um and uh and part of that struggle too was like i didn't i didn't even I didn't really pursue anything. I didn't put any ener enough energy into any of these ideas I had. Part probably partly because I was afraid that maybe I wouldn't be good and I would fail or whatever. Um, partly I didn't know how to work, you know, at yeah. it. But uh, I just, you know, I, I just didn't try. I didn't try new things very much. I didn't try. Uh, I explored a lot, but I didn't really commit to anything and like go all in with it. Right. Yeah. Until like my experience in the military um i mean even like football in junior high and high school like i didn't play because you know initially it was like when i was real young i think you know my, my mom i always blame my mom it's so funny she hates this she's like i never said that <laughs> but i do i mean i mean she didn't really want me to play when i was super young yeah it's like it's bad for the, the brain the culture around yeah. it is just weird too it's like you know, football dads, like eight year old kids, you know, run through his soul. You're like, dude, I weigh Crush him. 70 pounds. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just kind of funny. So, but then when I was older and I could play if I wanted to, I remember being 13 or 14 and it was like up to me. Right. I was afraid because I hadn't done it 
before and these kids have been playing since they were eight and I was like, Oh, what if I suck? What if I, I don't want to be a bench warmer? Like what, what if, what if all that crap and just talk my way out of it, you know, talk myself out of it. I mean, yeah. And, uh, and then just it, like regret, I regretted it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's as stupid of uh, juvenile as a thing as that is even into my like twenties when I'm like, you know, in the special forces and I'm going to combat and doing all these meaningful things i'm like man i wish i had played football like it's, <laughs> it's just true though and i was like i mean why I love that though. why am i gonna just who cares if i'm older like i don't want to live with that regret i want to um i, I want to face that challenge that i never did you know and if i get cut whatever right at this point i was like okay fine like i'll just if i get cut i'll just figure something else out like it's not that big a deal but i'm gonna put everything i have into it and give it you know, give it my best. And to be honest, like looking back, I don't think there's any way I couldn't have made it. Maybe not as a starter, but like onto the team at least because of how much time I put in, how committed I was to it, the way the, that I developed relationships around like Texas football before I even got there. Like I was talking to the strength coaches. I was, you know, I'd go into anybody's office and like communicate and just be like, this is what I want to do. This is why I want to do it. I mean, granted, none of them, you can hold your co cards kind of close because none of them knew I hadn't played football before. Right. Yeah. So I kept some things secret, but <laughs> little stuff like that. And, uh, dude, the, you said you were a five star like, recruit. Yeah. yeah <laughs> said, Where's the video? Where's the film? You got a film? Uh, this is a terrible fire. <laughs> it's, it, hey, it's Northern California, so it's believable, right? Yeah, like, well, <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's true. It's yeah. an earthquake, man. <laughs> Something. It just fell into the ocean. Can't yeah. find him. <laughs> I think a whale. A whale ate my homework, bro. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but see, but yeah, it was. Uh, but I, I mean, I've learned so many le lessons from that experience. Maybe as many as my time in the military, just because it was like, if you put, if you really just commit to something, and like you're pretty sure you want to check it out, and you want to try it, just commit to it for a while and give it you know, all of your energy that you have available. And, uh, and then just, he, even when you like suck for a while at that thing, whatever it is, just stay with it, stay with it, get the reps in, yeah. just keep going. And eventually like one or two things are going to happen. Either you're going to realize it's not for you and you're not into it. Mm -hmm. And that, when I'm saying it's not for you, I'm not saying just cause you're not good at it. Don't, that shouldn't matter. If you're passionate about it, then you, there's no reason not to, continue to pursue that thing if that's right. what you love who cares if you suck who cares yeah. you know maybe other people might but they're probably the, the people that will criticize you are the ones that never try anything yeah. um so either you're not going to be you're, you're going to lose that passion and desire and that's okay then you just move on to something else or if you don't quit it's just eventually going to work out you know it's just that's just how it is and uh admiral mccraven just recently um, who was the, he was the SOCOM commander. He planned the bin Laden mission. Yeah. You know, he has that famous commencement speech at UT right. about making your bed. Making your bed. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. And then he just recently, he was a chancellor at UT and he, he's been battling some health stuff, but oh, wow. you know, he's never public about it cause he's just a, just a tough guy, a real tough Old guy. Hard crusty yeah, dude. Exactly. Yeah. But like the sweetest guy in the world at the same time, like yeah. really is. Have you met him? Yeah. A couple of oh, times. That's he's, awesome. he's, yeah. he's a few times. Yeah. He's great. He's really great. But I just was watching on online. He spoke to the Texas football team like a couple weeks ago in training camp. And somebody asked him a question. One of the players like, you know, how did you make it as a Navy SEAL and all these things? And he was just like, well, there's, there's not like, there's no secret. There's no secret sauce or like magic words or, you know, um, formula. You know, it's not how many push-ups you can do, how fast you can run. It's none of that. He's like, you just don't quit. He's like, it's really simple. Wow. If you just don't quit it will happen. Wow. Know? It might not happen on your time. It might not happen the way you've s imagined it, right. but it will happen yeah. you know, if you just don't quit. And it's, uh, it's so true. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. like, he, he's, he was saying things like, you know, if you just, if you, if everybody in this room just doesn't quit every single person, like, you know, you, you might not lose a game this year, you know, wow. but you have to be willing to not quit <laughs> at yeah, all costs. Yeah. Like, no matter what, I just am not, I don't care what the, how much I'm down, you know, the mistakes I've made, if I just don't quit, and that means giving 100%, I right. think 99% is quitting, <laughs> uh, True. then like it, it, uh, it will happen, you know? And so yeah. I got to keep telling myself that with this 
film and TV stuff I'm doing now because like it's disheartening and there's so much rejection and that's just that's a lot of things in life that are hard to do like and they involve a lot of rejection and yeah, a lot yeah. of like um, people telling you you know all the reasons you shouldn't be doing it you know what yeah, I mean yeah. making excuses for you instead of you making them for yourself yeah we have a really hard time getting past that though I feel like um, especially you know I mean in any community rejection is tough but when you come out and you've done all these incredible things you know the military kind of empowers you in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and you get out you know what was the difference in Green Beret Nate you know the guy who'd had a career in the military and you know you'd already experienced all that rejection in Hollywood and kind of seen the bat the dark well, side I, I hadn't really yet because I didn't put myself out there okay. to be honest gotcha. I I, I maybe at a very small level, but I rejected myself before anybody did here. Mm, that's you know a good what point. I mean? Yeah, I really did. Yeah. I just didn't. If I don't put myself out there and really don't go all in, then, um, I mean, I'm not even going to have the opportunities for people to tell me no. Right. So I won't have that rejection, and I'll have an excuse of like, well, I didn't, you know. I didn't put anything into it. So yeah, it was like being, sense. yeah, it was just yeah. being afraid to fail. Right. Stopped me from putting, you know, limited me from putting anything into it, from yeah. putting any effort in because I was like, well, what if I put all this effort in? I put all these eggs in and I'm like, I'm going to go for it. And I, and I follow my heart, you know, um, and it gets stepped on like, oh, that's going to hurt way worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's just no way to live, dude, because you're never going to succeed that way. No. I mean, you have to get incredibly lucky for something to go your way if you're just going to like willy nilly, you know, yeah. uh, sort of h halfway put your toe in the water. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Nah. <laughs> it's like being young and like being afraid. I mean, well, it can happen now, but it's like being afraid to get hurt by like a girl, you know, it's oh, like totally. if you don't put yourself out there, you're never going to know if there's a possibility there. So, it's still hard. I mean, even at, yeah, at any age, that stuff's hard, you know, just to, uh, with, with, with romantic relationships, with, uh, family stuff, you know what I mean? Like with maybe, uh, something that hasn't, you know, an old friendship, maybe that like, maybe you made a mistake or they made a mistake or whatever, just forgiveness and taking responsibility and like, you know, being a, being a man or yeah. a woman, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Uh, it's really hard to do. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like man. simple on paper, just like not quitting, yeah. you know, it's very simple to say and like blah, blah, blah. But like, and people yeah. are like, Oh yeah, that is easy. Yeah. But to actually apply it is extremely hard. It's really? just the answers. Yeah. We know the answers to the test. Like we all know, well, yeah. most of us know what we need to do to be successful. We're just not willing to do it because there is the chance of failure. And that's scary. You know yeah, what I mean? Because absolutely. it does, it does hurt when it happens, but that's See, just, that is life. That's that up and down we were talking about earlier. Like it's, you're supposed to, you're supposed to fail at a lot of stuff. Yeah. And if you're trying really hard stuff, you know, you're supposed to fail way, way more than you succeed. You're supposed to, Yeah. you know, you have to, right. You, just, you, I mean, you learn so much more from that. And, and we've all heard that from a million people that are successful, you know, oh, I failed way more than I succeeded. And you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. You're super <laughs> successful. People say that to me all the time. And, and you know, because they think I've done all these, oh, you did that. You were a green beret and you made it to the NFL and you know, you're climbing mountains and you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're in Den of Thieves, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dale Thieves, bro. Russell. <laughs> like, man, that's so awesome. Like you're so lucky, you know? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I am lucky to have the opportunity. It's a lot of hard like, work, bro. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And also like, I, I don't share every time I fail. It's not like, I don't even share when I succeed really, but people yeah. see the success. Yeah. They don't see all the failure. You know what I mean? And right. like banging my head against the wall and the frustrations and like, getting really close to some other things that I thought were even bigger things and they just didn't happen. And it's like, yeah, that, hurt, that that's hard, man. That hurts. Yeah. You know? Hey, but you got a tweet out of uh, Joe Bernthal from it. So I mean, John, <laughs> John, Bernthal. I said Joe, Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. Destroyed. definitely editing that. He doesn't out. live that far from here. He's up in Ohio. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've yeah. never been to his place. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just drive by. He's, I got to John, meet, what's I, up? I got to meet him uh, a while ago. I heard he's a great guy. He's one of my agents. He was super nice, man. Yeah. He was super cool. He went out of his way to like come up and talk. And he was at like a, it was like a premiere for Punisher. Wow. So like he had, you know, all, all the media and fans and everybody was like, you know, trying to say what's up. And yeah. my buddy knew him and he just, he just, he's so much respect for veteran community you know he, he really does care and, bro that was a really cool, cool tweet though because it was, really it was cool. like you know that's gonna be kind of inspirational to you when you're in that spot you're feeling kind of yeah. low and yeah then somebody he comes just in. basically said keep at it you know and I, I i i was uh 
I was very transparent about something that, uh, you know, one of those things, I was, those close calls I was just talking about. Right. Where I thought I had something that was, you know, potentially a career, big career shifter, you know? Yeah. And I got super close and I didn't get it. Mm. And in the moment, of course, even now, even me saying all these things on this podcast, like in those moments, I'm still like, all I can think about is uh, how much it hurts and failing and losing and like, oh, what if I I could have done this. I could have done that. What could I have done different? Um, that's just human nature. Like you're not going to get up. You're not going to ever get past that. It's just recognizing it, you know, after that, the, the pain goes away a little bit and then moving forward and continuing on the path instead of just like quitting. Right. But, uh, but yeah, he was like, just through his little tweet of, of, you know, keep after it, like blah, blah, blah. I, I don't remember what exactly what it said, but essentially I th immediately what jumped into my head was like, how many times has he failed? Like I bet a ton a of lot, these so yeah. many close calls and so many, so many times uh, that he was like, I, this is it. And then it wasn't it. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? Or even when he got the thing and he thought it was going to really change his career or whatever, it doesn't have to always be career. And then it just didn't, you know? Right. And, yeah. Uh, obviously he you thought it was like that quit. one stepping stone yeah. into the next thing. And then it didn't turn into yeah. that. So he knows exactly what I was feeling. He knows exactly but he also knows like what I needed to hear. And, um, you know, he knows that if, if you just, you just keep chipping away, you keep moving forward. Um, or at least, at least don't move backwards. Maybe you have to move laterally a little bit, but, right. <laughs> uh, then, you know, eventually it, that thing will happen, right. you know, and then something else will happen and then something else won't happen. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. So, you know, you've got, people obviously as you know kind of going back to that last question i asked the guys struggling who are really in that position where they're having a hard time with you know position and growth and really getting out and getting after it you know they're kind of sitting on the couch they're not sure what to do maybe they're even feeling you know bad in a dark place you know possibly even suicidal those dark thoughts you know how, how do you get to how did you get to a position where you said you know what i'm gonna get back at it i'm gonna try hollywood again after your career in the military i'm gonna go after this again and i'm gonna you know try until i absolutely just you know have to quit or i'm forced to quit or whatever how did you get to that um you know i think i think after football or the process of learning a new skill even though i was older and plenty of naysayers, you know, and I don't have the prototypical like, uh, college football, much less NFL body and talent. Like I'm not that, I think people assume I'm like a really good athlete. I'm really not. I'm like a pretty good athlete. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Like I can pick up a sport I can play, I can compete, but I can't jump. I'm not very fast. Um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not super quick. I don't even pick things up quickly, like mentally. Like it takes me a long time to figure stuff out. And I'm, it's like embarrassing sometimes. I feel like I'm just dumb, you know, <laughs> but some things I just need really spelled out for me. I need to watch something over and over and over to get it. Right. And then, you know, picking up a skill, everyone's like, oh man, you must, you pick things up so quick. Like that's crazy. And I'm like, no, like uh, maybe a little bit, but I just, I put in so many reps. I'll go out for hours and do something. You know what I mean? I mean, like, now one of my new hobbies is golf. And right. I played golf in the past, but I've been playing a lot more lately because it's super challenging. You have to put in like a lot of time, and also it's a nice little escape from the world. Um, but like if you don't give a hundred percent of your attention to that golf ball every time, bad things happen. Right. And it's a great lesson for life. Um, but it's also like. Uh, it's very fulfilling when you're <laughs> it sounds so corny talking about golf like this but it's very no, fulfilling no, when you start good, hitting yeah. it good because you're focused you're like locked in and that just relates to everything in life and that's how it was for for football and like long snapping for me i mean i long snapped my first ball when i was 31 you know i won the starting job later that year and then by 34 i was like getting a shot in the nfl to snap and yeah. like anybody can do anything in this world if you're just going to commit that time and put into it right Right. So for this, it's always been something I've been very interested in. I think film and television medium is really powerful. And, you know, I mean, just storytelling in general, like you're a part of that. You understand that storytelling can change uh, the world. It can change the way individuals see the world, see themselves. Yeah. Um, 
you know, see other people. And maybe that's the most important thing right now is like yeah. perspective of other people. And, yeah. and, uh, anyway, so like, and it's fun because, and it's hard, it's super competitive. So all those things are reasons that I'm just passionate about it. And I think, um, yeah, I also had the regret of not, not really uh, going after it when I was younger, not really putting in anything. When I look back, I mean, I went to, I took some acting classes and I, um, you know, I was interested in going to, to film school, but like, I was like, Oh, I don't really know if I want to do it. And I'm not going to ask my parents for money to send me to film school. Cause like, they're probably not going to want to do that anyway. Maybe <laughs> <They're really, laughs> we saw you yeah, last no. time you went. <laughs> yeah. So like, I just didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, back then I just didn't put anything on it and you know, you reap what you sow and I reaped nothing cause I sowed less. So like, uh, <laughs> that needs now, to be on a t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, it's, you know, so, I'm, I'm, I'm reaping a little bit, yeah. but I, I'm sowing a lot of seeds and planting a lot of them and uh, watering the hell out of them. And it's like, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, and a lot of different, uh, avenues trying to, uh, trying to figure out, uh, what part of the industry I think mostly that I'm super into. Um, but I think it can be more than just a, one thing. Like there's a lot of things I'm into, uh, but also like just planting all those, those seeds. So if so planting all those seeds, so if something starts happening positive, which is great, like I can start to ride that train a little bit, but I don't have to just be like, Oh, it's this or nothing. Cause that train's going to stop, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. And then um, if I don't have anything else, ready ready on that you know that's been on the back burner or whatever uh i'm gonna be in trouble i'm gonna be starting over i'm gonna be feeling like like so downtrodden and and oh man i uh, what now you know right kind of like a transition from anything yeah how and how important you know you know when you're pushing into this passion this you know next the second time around into hollywood and you know getting into tv and film and all that how important was your career in the military? How integral was that to, you know, what you were doing within TV and film and, and the passionate pursuit of that art? I mean, a huge part of it. Same with football. But something that's really unique about f film and TV, especially like on a set, um, the first time, the first big set I was on was for 12 Strong, which is a military awesome. movie, right? And I just had a little part in it. I only sh was on set for like three days. Yeah. You know, I was just in a few scenes. But I was kind of watching everything from a distance because there's uh, when you're acting on something, there's a ton of downtime. Yeah. You know, like hurry up and wait. We all know that in the military. It's like times 10 on this. And yeah. so some days like you wait all day and like nothing happens. And <laughs> yeah. The next day you're like super busy all day and you know, you're, you're whatever. Right. You get it. Well, I, I just noticed how similar it was to like a military training operation. You know, definitely not a combat situation, but right. like, there's different things going on through all the departments. They have to communicate. There's a chain of command, you know, the, the producers and director are kind of like the, the officers, right? Right. There's people working under them. And also like when there's sudden change, you know what I mean? If we have uh, weather or something uh, equipment wise is not cooperating or a set or I don't know anything, right. you have to be able to uh, flex and adjust right away and like move on to the next thing, you know, you know, timely fashion because it's really expensive to make TV shows and movies and yeah. they don't want to waste money. They are waste enough. Just like, <laughs> like in the military, we waste plenty of money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but you've got to like, we, we gotta be able to flip it and, you know, flip a switch and like move on and okay, now I need this, 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 and this. And you have a pace plan and just like in the military, you know, you got your primary alternate contingency and emergency yeah. for all departments. They have all those things. You know, I had like stupid little thing, but I had, uh, when we were shooting in, in Mexico for uh, Mayans a couple months ago or last month, whatever, it was super hot, like the ground. Yeah. It melted the shoe rubber off my crappy excuse for a combat boot that I had on. Yeah. And, or the shoe glue or whatever. And the sole completely ripped off my shoe. Oh. And it was like flopping around like a, <laughs> like a mouth. You know what I yeah, mean? And yeah. I'm like running across the street in the scene and it's like, <laughs> and, uh, I hope I, they keep that in there. <laughs> yeah. I, it, that scene, it, that one, that one of those shots will probably be in there. But like, 
the uh, it's kind of ripping on the wardrobe department right now. But like they didn't have a standby ready, and it was a huge deal. And oh like, wow, everyone was like, "Oh, dude, Dang. like come on, bro." You know what I mean? Like that you got one job kind of thing. You know all yeah, these conversations. Yeah. So somebody from uh, the lighting department used like gaffing tape and like taped my foot. You know, taped the thing shut on my foot because they didn't want to waste time. Right. Got all these actors on set and other people, and they're paying all these people. They're oh, paying yeah. for the. Uh, location so I like, quickly wrapped this thing up in tape and shot a couple more scenes with it like that you know and obviously it's I mean it's not like <laughs> it's not war no but yeah, like yeah. I just saw those things of uh, as like man if this if this set I felt like in that moment I'm like if this was more veterans on this set um like you just you wouldn't have as many of those issues you know right what I mean? yeah. and like I feel I could be wrong we all make mistakes too we're not perfect but yeah I think that we, attention we, I think, to detail. I think we overplan yeah. in a good way sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? Because we're worried about, um, yeah, being that guy. Like yeah. nobody in the military wants to be that guy, and, no. and nobody wants to be that that guy in life either. But I think there's just more of a emphasis on it with us, where it's like, yeah. you know, everybody's doing push-ups because you did something wrong is the oh, worst yeah. feeling in the world. Like I'd rather be, I'd rather be the one getting smoked than the one standing there watching all my buddies get smoked because I did something dumb. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. I mean, you know, what's funny is that uh, reminds me of a story when I was in uh, basic training at Fort Knox. Uh, they called us all into formation and they had me like they kept you all in this one roster number out. Right. Because you had serial numbers for like the first couple mm. weeks and they're like zero seven five six. And I was like, and I see tough stuff getting tossed out the top windows like third story window you just see like somebody's lockers contents yeah, yeah. going out the window into the pit it's getting tossed and they keep yelling the serial number the drill sergeant and i'm like oh man in my mind i'm going poor sucker dude he's gonna get killed like he's gonna get smoked so hard bro they said it like the fifth time and nobody had come forward and in my head i go oh that's my roster number <laughs> <laughs> bro uh, i took two you know i did took two steps back ran around the formation to the front yes drill sergeant oh dude gosh. they proceeded to smoke my you know smoke my platoon for like an hour while i watched what did you do i mean what 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 caused i this? had blue falcon i left my locker unlocked oh jeez. yeah dude brutal. yeah that was brutal yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I knew, like in my head, I kept hearing that number, and I was like, "Poor sucker!" But secretly, what, what, kind what's of, funny is you left your locker unlocked, yeah. though, so it's yeah. not that bad. No, no, it's not no, like no. you you were supposed. To, it's not like you were supposed to lock up the weapons, right? You know? yeah, and, and I like, left or them you screwed all over. everybody else's stuff. But yeah, still. yeah, it's the small little yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, you of remember course, how big of, of a deal that was. It's a small oh, thing. Something was rolled wrong. Yeah. You know, oh like yeah. A sock was mis mis misfolded or rolled. <laughs> In, in the wrong direction yeah you know, whatever that is you know same thing it was the biggest deal yeah. yeah you didn't fold your your bed correctly right yeah your hospital corners are off i i think but i was kind of relating that back to that set that is really interestingly important with continuity and you know yeah. detail and planning obviously you have a you know on a set i don't know how it works on the big sets but i did in college you know we did small yeah. films but there's a continuity person that you know deals oh, totally. specifically with those instances. Mm -hmm. So those moments are huge, that's right? Like, like a, yeah, that's totally a logistic, like a logistics person in the military. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. and then there's like the director is like the say if we're talking about a you know a, a, a company size element or whatever, the director is like the captain, right? But then you have a sergeant major who's the first AD, the first assistant director, right? right? And the first AD, their full job is like time hack. Why is this taking so long? You know, where is so and so? <laughs> yeah. What is this? The director is like the art of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like making sure that you know he's looking through the uh, the camera at what the 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 DP or cinematographer has you know selected for the shot, and he's like saying, mm, "I don't like this so much." You know, can we rack focus to to him or her from this and blah blah blah? Right. He's doing all that stuff, or she. And then the first AD is literally like no creative. It's not creative. Oh, it's yeah. like you know every department better have their. Shit tight and like i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna troop the line and make sure everybody's ready to go and if yeah. something breaks or they've got the wrong lens on 
and camera department doesn't have one on standby. Like, why is this not on? Like, get, you have three <laughs> minutes. We are rolling in three minutes. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's pretty cool, dude. Like to see all that. I get excited. I'm like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's in trouble. Yeah. Like, this is getting this is getting heated in here. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can see other people kind of like, oh, oh god, oh, no. You know. That's, but uh, we sort of rise to that. We like that stuff. You know. That's so funny too, because I, I was on a. I think it was a commercial shoot with uh, the guys from. Um, I think it was like all warrior network and they're doing, they were doing a shoot with grunt style for like a commercial and they shut down mm. this bridge in LA mm. and I was photographing it for, I was covering one of the veterans there and they did this commercial and it was, you know, a big expensive commercial, but the first AD was like, like, you know, I don't want to toss him under the bus. I won't say any names, but he was, doing his job perfectly so he's kind of a jerk like yeah, and i yeah, was yeah. like that's what you want your first ad to totally. be like right yeah, like he's the bad guy man. yeah he's you gotta know? be the bad guy yeah gotta be the bad guy but like stuff gets done first I mean, sergeant that's, yeah. That's, yeah first sergeant or sergeant yeah whatever yeah uh, that's more what i went i meant i guess more of a first sergeant or master sergeant yeah yeah you know, a team sergeant yeah uh, more than a sergeant major but it's definitely like yeah you you are you know you, you make sure that all your specific squads mm-hmm. are like on their shit, doing their job, right time, right place, right uniform, right equipment, yeah, right attitude, um, and like we just have no time to waste, right? Because they add up, minutes add up over the day. They turn into hours, and oh, then yeah. that turns into going over time, which means you gotta, you know, you got, you're on a uh, dude. You can a lose budget. a whole day, you, right? And you're, and you're on yeah. a budget with your filming stuff, you know. So like, actors love it. Because they're like, oh, I'm getting time and a half now. Now I'm getting <laughs> double time. Like, because y'all screwed up. It's great. Directors do not, though. No, yeah. And like the producers, and yeah. because they got to report to the network, like, why are you under budget or why are you over budget? You know right. what I mean? Why are you over budget on this? And and what, why don't we have enough? Di- we, we didn't even get, all, get enough days. We didn't get all our days in. Like, and it's all those little minutes. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Those yeah. moments and people unprepared. And that could be actors, too. It could be anybody. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was in a. Definitely not going to name names on this one, but like in a scene where the guy just, and he had a ton of dialogue. I got it. Right. But he's a recognizable dude. And you know, he's done this hundreds of times before. Like, you know what I mean? So for me, I was just like, "Eh, I think he's just kind of phoning this one in because he's not prepared. Really? Yeah. Because he just didn't know his dialogue. He didn't know his lines. And he, I mean, we had to shoot the scene 20 times. And it was a lot of dialogue. I, I mean, I get it. I probably would have screwed up too. <laughs> yeah. But and there's uh, a difference between like being underprepared and like you seeing like a guy's just nervous or something. Obviously, for sure, for sure. Because usually the nerves, like once they do it a few times, it kind of they go away a little bit. You right. Know? And and, and I, I noticed too that even first ads, all these people on set, they they're pretty patient with with a lot of the actors because I think they know too if their performance sucks it's not going to make for a good product, but also like if you're pressuring them more and more, they're going to get more nervous yeah. and they're just never going to get it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. we're just, so you got to be positive. You got to be supportive. And totally, um, but everybody sees what's going on and you're kind of just like, Oh boy, like this guy just Doesn't... come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like this is, this should have taken an hour and it's going to take four hours now. So, but this is, this is interesting to me because this is kind of a crossover to what you're looking to in the future, right? You do eventually want to start your own production company, and you do want veterans heavily involved. Totally. And, and the reason for that being is those things selfish are so reasons. Important. It's yeah, not selfish. I, I don't give a damn about the veteran community. I hate veterans. <laughs> I mean, talk about all you the have time. said that you know, uh, like a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> we're so entitled and annoying, yeah. and shit, but we're really good at what we do. Yeah, yeah. No, it comes from a place of love, of course. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it's natural though. You sometimes yeah. hate what you love the most. Oh, for you? sure. For, yeah. I just get frustrated because I expect a lot out of us. Yeah, you know what I mean. When yeah. we're when we're underperforming or when when you know we're, when we're infighting, uh, you've got that drama with yes. the community. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. I mean, we you and I talk about that quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, we talked like, about everybody. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Right? Yeah, <laughs> start naming names. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like every. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, it can be a frustrating community, but like I know what we're capable of. Yeah. It's like a, you know, any parent that knows their child is a capable child, and their child's not living up to their potential. They freaking are like, God, I can't stand this person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Little I, Johnny, <laughs> like he's so annoying. Yeah. He's just so he could do anything, and he just doesn't care. He sleeps till eleven jerk, every day. Yeah. And he's like <laughs> a little you know, lazy jerk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, uh, 
uh, wait, what was what was? Uh... We were tracing back to the uh, production company. We were oh talking yeah, about wanting to work veterans into Hollywood. Yeah, and and not specific, not because it's the right thing to do, or like oh the veteran community because we've served and we deserve. But bro, you gotta no. help us. We need help. Yeah, bro. exactly. Really not because of that. Yeah. Because like when we are challenged with something, you know, and we have an opportunity to, um, to really sh- show what we're made of and we're under the gun and like, you know, time constraints or whatever it is, like we rise to the occasion. I mean, think about like team Rubicon is a great example. Yeah. I mean, just like what they're all about. Natural disaster hits like veterans are like running into the fire, raising their hands like, Oh, I want to go. And they're excited about it. And it's like, death and destruction all around and they're just like yes you know they're this all is like, about it this yeah. is my moment like yeah. this is what i train for this is what i love it's that adrenaline it's yeah. that edge you're finding that again and you the, know? yeah and the, yeah. and the and the and the brotherhood that comes with all that you know right. i mean my favorite times looking back in the moment i didn't always feel it but looking back favorite times in the military was like um really tough training you know what i mean yeah. where we it's just it's physically extremely demanding and exhausting and you're like you know uh, no food, no sleep, uh, no fun. <laughs> yeah. But uh, once you get through it with that group, like you're so connected to them and um, it's such an exhilarating feeling and um, you just feel, you feel so alive and, and really part of something, even if it was just a, you know, make believe exercise uh, that you achieve together. But like, it's a pretty amazing feeling. And I just want to replicate that um, in, in making, you know, creative projects and, and get us all back on that page because I, even working with team Rubicon since then, like you see that immediately once everyone gets out there, um, and they're, you know, uh, houses have been destroyed and they're clearing the rubble and they're looking for people. And even beyond that, they're starting to rebuild it. Like we just, we just become switched on in those moments. And, yeah. uh, man, we, we, we give each other crap and like, you know, you, you don't even have to know the person from before just cause you have that shared experience of the military. Like you, it's this unspoken, like it's okay. Um, you can sort of shout orders to me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to get offended because you're in charge right now. I'm just, right. I understand this is my role and it's just really cool. And yeah, and that's, what, really this, that's to, what this industry needs, man. It needs a little more of that to be honest. Yeah. And if we really need to talk about it later, we can always just, you know, punch each other in the face afterwards you know but for yeah, now yeah. like we'll sort it out yeah we'll man. sort it out we'll figure it out but in the moment it's good you know yeah. you just do it because and we'll probably realize. if we get in a fight we'll probably have beers later yeah <laughs> well, the guys we'll be that all gotten, guys yeah. that all got in fights in the military usually were super close dude yeah you know same I mean? yeah it was like because you really care about that person and they disappointed you mm-hmm. so whatever or and vice versa and they said something that hurt yeah because you, you love them yeah and so then yeah you duke it out and then afterwards you're like ah, right, whatever yeah <laughs> that's my best friend yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so um as you push forward kind of towards your you know towards your goals and what you're doing now you know what 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 do you feel like have been your has been your biggest accomplishment within the field of film and television specifically oh, man i don't feel like i haven't i mean I, I feel like a prick saying that because i i know i have i've had some successes and i know there's a lot of people out here that are working really hard that haven't right and so i'm not trying to like say discount what i have been able to achieve, but I still feel like I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't yet even come close to, uh, fulfilling my potential or, or even achieving what I set out to do, you know? Right. Um, I'm, I'm super grateful for those opportunities and, you know, being able to be in, be in a a few movies and TV shows and, and be on the production side and, and even writing side of a few things that are in development and all that. But really until, uh, we make a movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um, through, th- through some of the stuff, like I, I co-wrote a script, um, about MVP, about the chair. Right. You yeah. Know? That was the Durant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, what? Oh yeah. With, yeah. British yeah. army veteran yeah, brother. Yeah. yeah G. Gee, yeah. 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 I said Durant. Gaze. I don't know why I'm talking to him like that. <laughs> he calls himself 10 yeah. different things. Kevin yeah. Durant. Is that who it is? I mean, you said that. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Durant. <laughs> yeah. I don't exactly. even call him Durant. I don't know why I said that. Yeah. <laughs> He's an idiot. Wow. <laughs> he is. Definitely. He's really hard to understand. Super British. <laughs> yeah. Super. Is he Welsh? He's Welsh, isn't he? Welsh. Yeah. Technically. 
Exactly. Ooh, I just, yeah, man, I just really stepped on him with that. He's going to be like, bro, I told you a million times I'm not British. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. He's an idiot. He spells color wrong. <laughs> yeah, he does, in <laughs> honor. There's no you or in no any you. of those words, dummy. <laughs> 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 uh, on our uh, color, color. <laughs> so we say flower, yeah, like the white stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, F L O U R. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, if it's spelled that way, we're gonna say it that way, dog. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, dog. Sorry, dog. So you, but you. But wrote, anyway, yeah, yeah. So we, so we, 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 uh, we have that uh, that script, and I want to make. We really want to make that movie, man. That's like the number one thing I, I, I really want to make because it's a, it's about a based on real people and the backstory of a guy that um, you know, was a homeless vet living in a shelter on Sunset Boulevard, Sunset in Alexandria, actually, in like East Hollywood, and then a former NFL player, uh, first year out of the league, you know, with a wife, kid, car, all that stuff. Yeah. And so on the exterior, you know, there are different skin colors, uh, completely different backgrounds, different uh, current situations, economic status, everything's different, but they're going through the exact same thing with the loss of the locker room and the tribe and the purpose and the mission and feeling like you'll ever do anything as important as you did before. And, uh, it's this, you know, th this brotherhood and bond they develop between one another. Um, but of course there's like a big falling out and all this drama. And you gotta have the, the drama, well. man. Yeah. I gotta but have that's, it. Ba that's basically what it is. They end up saving each other. So, yeah. Um, it's really cool. It's really, what? it's really awesome. And we will make it. You yeah. Know? So well, what's stopping you right now? Like what's money? the whole thing? <laughs> Everything in life. You got life, a couple yeah. mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, brother. Actually, yeah. a briefcase under the bed. Oh, oh you got cool. it. <laughs> yeah, you can't even get under these beds. Dude. No, that's true. Yeah, we're in a hotel room. By I the lied. Way. Oh wait, yeah, we're on camera. Yeah, no, that's people, what know. people will know. Yeah. Okay. It's creepy. Uh, <laughs> and then we should have done this in the bed, like <laughs> clothes. <We're> just, <laughs> yeah, clearly. But just in clearly, bed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's just been fun. Which takes me back to that. Which takes me back to that story at the army ball. Oh wow! Oh That's yeah, a good, story. Good, good, good little segue there. I think tee it up. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but dude, if I tell this story, you can't come in and be like, "No, but this happened." Because why not? Because oh, I mean, you can. It is you're you are the guest. Go ahead. But I feel like every time I tell it, you're like, "Oh, Tim tells it better," and then I start to tell it, and you're like, "No, no." That's this. just my personality, <laughs> though, man. Yeah. I, I'm a perfectionist, <laughs> and I'm super rude. <laughs> so <laughs> it's gonna happen. Just get used to it. But please. But please. <laughs> I'm already cringing over here on edge. <laughs> um, so we were at the Army Ball. I won't say what year. Yeah. And we were seated at a table together. You were the speaker for that event. You were the keynote speaker. And I was there as your guest. Now, to preface this, you were dressed in your Class A's. So... <laughs> Dude, I'm already starting to laugh. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm in my civilian suit, right? Skinny pants. <laughs> skinny, <laughs> tight skinny, <blazer>. tie. <laughs> skinny tie. Skinny tie. Everything Looking was skinny. pretty skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Looking a little not straight. So yeah. no, I wouldn't say that. You just, just very metrosexual. Very, metro. Yeah, very, very metro. metro. Exactly. Yeah. Dapper. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I dress. I like it, man. That's, and you're a big, smiley, happy guy. <laughs> I was super happy. And you're my date. Yeah. So <laughs> was your date. And I was there as your He's date. Plus one. Yeah. And Continue. So there's this table of like family and, you know, like, you know, um, wounded Iraq veteran, awesome guy we know very well. Um, and then another, you know, a couple gold star wives and all that. And, you know, so Nate's getting ready to speak and he does actually speak, comes back to the table. We've got like this, you know, army colonel at our table from NORCOM, right? Like Northern Command. And he's sitting there at the table. He's like, you know, he starts telling us this story and me and you, and you're slightly behind me when he's telling this story or, or you're behind him. And he's telling the story about his son, who is a captain in the United States Army. And he's like, yeah, he's like, so, man, my son, he's just really struggling, guys. Like, he's in Hawaii now, and he's off on his own. And, like, as soon as he says this, I'm like, well, why is he struggling in Hawaii? That seems like a pretty sweet assignment. But, you know, maybe I'm not hearing something properly. So he's like, yeah, he's took command of this infantry company. And he's, you know, he's really, he's trying really hard to fit in, but he's just having a hard time. He's like, how, how did you, how did you... <laughs> How did you, how did you guys do it? 
<laughs> how do you how do you do it? How did you do it? And dude, I'm totally like I have no idea what's You're going oblivious, on. Yeah. I'm completely oblivious. But for some reason, I keep looking at the peripheral of my eye and like seeing you kind of behind him, and like you're turning red, like trying. My so eyes are hard. bulging out yeah. of my skull. I'm like, <laughs> like oh trying no. So hard not to <laughs> laugh. I, mean, I didn't want to laugh, yeah. but I also was like, yeah. I could tell you quite weren't, weren't quite catching on, and I was no kind of looking clue. at you like, Tim, dude, dude, like making the uh, yeah. one eye bigger than the other, like, yeah. bro, <laughs> bro, what? you st- don't know what he's saying. You're right now? stumbling right into. Th- <laughs> yeah. I think those were your exact words after too. We're like, you don't know what he's saying. <laughs> um, so I'm so I'm like, he goes through this whole story and he keeps saying, you know, like, yeah, he's just really struggling. He's like, how did you get through this? And the whole time I'm like, man, I, you know, I don't know. It was, it was, you know, hard being in an infantry company, but eventually I got it, and eventually I, you know, I kind of just acclimated to it. You know, it was, I finally caught on. You know, and and the whole, you know, again, you're back there, kind of like trying not to laugh, like you know, turning all shades of red. And he's like, "Man, I just really want to thank you for having this talk," and like embraces both of us, right? Yeah, me. Your hug was longer than mine. <laughs> You just want to make that point. <laughs> yeah. He hugged me. He was so proud of us. Bro, he was so proud. He's like, I'm so proud of I'm you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. You know? Because it must be hard, you know. <laughs> just wraps us up in this bear hug. And I go, man, you know what? And like at the after the hug, I'm like, gosh, that was like really almost too nice, you know? Like that was yeah. he was super nice. And I walk away, you know, to you and you're like, bro. Do you not understand what happened? There? He's like, no. you're like, I'm no, like, no what? dude. What? And I think as soon as I was in the middle of like saying that, I was like, oh, n- oh, no, what? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. He definitely thinks we're partners, right? Yeah, now. <laughs> definitely thinks we're partners. Yeah, the son is bravely going bravely down that road, man, which was tough. Road. And this is like, you know, I mean. The don't ask don't tell thing wasn't that long ago. No, yeah, it was pretty you know close. I mean? It was, yeah. and it was just, yeah, it was crazy. That was crazy. Do you remember the after party? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, with his wife. <laughs> his wife. His wife like seeks us out at the after party. Yeah. And she's like, so I talked to my husband, <laughs> and I was thinking like, okay, she must have talked to other people as well, and they're like, oh no no no, that's yeah, not that's yeah. just Nate's friend Tim. No, and he's because like, you know John wasn't doing anything to dispel that myth no, whatsoever. No, no. Yeah, no. He our buddy that was yeah. yeah our other buddy there was like he was he's loving yeah, he's it. stoking that flame. Oh dude. bad yeah, and uh, she just like puts maybe one arm on both of us, just like <laughs> boys. <laughs> Keep fighting the good fight. Dude, yes. <laughs> yes. She got so close to us, too. Yeah. Like, it was our little secret. Oh, like, yeah. really it was our little secret <laughs> until now. <laughs> until now. And now everybody knows. Yeah. Oh, man. That was oh, crazy. That was so crazy. Experience. I wonder how that guy's doing. Yeah. Did you, I think John said he keeps going back and, like, telling him, like, oh, yeah, they're doing great. They're doing really oh, good. Oh, John's yeah, keeping it John, going? Yeah. Wow. John said he's keeping it going. That's, That's yeah. all good. Whatever. Hey, man. Love is love, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Dude, that's funny so funny um but you know i kind of wanted to uh, you know wrap things up by you know talking about some of the things that um you had gotten into in the community where you know you wrote a couple of letters open letters which i'm sure everybody listening we won't re-explain that or re-examine that because i th- think most people have a feeling of the whole colin kaepernick deal with the san francisco 49ers me and a quarterback and Kind of, you know, him wanting the whole thing was he wanted to kind of sit out the national anthem, yeah, sit on the sideline, and then that turned into you know basically you two meeting. You had wanted to write an angry letter um, to the Army Times that you just found in the process of that that you know what I'm not you know what I I, I can understand this. This is a right and a freedom that he has to do this, and through that whole process of meeting him and talking to him and all that, you've gotten. Hate from the right, you gotten hate from the left, you gotten love from the right, love from the left. Not really love. Not really love. <laughs> just kind of a general interest. Mostly in like, hate. Mostly hate. No, no. I've gotten a lot. A lot I, I think initially, anyway, it was mostly just love from people kind of in the middle. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Or people from the far left that didn't fully understand. Like they thought I was like, um, they thought I'd either suggested that Colin Kaepernick protests during the anthem or right. whatever. There, the media spun this thing so many different ways, and it was a lot of assumptions made by 
journalists about you know who I was and 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 what why I was willing to sit down with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which just it was purely um, somebody that was just down to hear someone out. Right. I didn't necessarily agree with and then have a conversation about it. But people made, yeah, people make assumptions and, uh, you know, everybody tries to uh, take a narrative and make it theirs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or not a narrative. I guess take a an individual and uh, spin them into their narrative somehow. You right. know what I mean? And, yeah. and say, oh, look, a, a Green Beret says this or supports this, so it must be okay or it must be right. And it's right. just like, what? You know, and that's something I've always had it's to one talk with people about where it's like, look, I don't speak for the veteran community. I just speak for myself. And I'm just a person trying to listen to somebody else and offer advice, uh, you know, and, and why I feel a certain way, but also understanding that my experiences are what shape all my beliefs. Right. And so if I don't understand anybody experiences, but my own, which I can't, uh, unless I listen to where they're coming from and why, like, how can I pretend to understand, uh, what they believe and why they believe it? Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of was what I was getting to was, so this was obviously a very hot topic for quite some time. Still hot. Yeah. Still <laughs> hot. Still hot. <laughs> Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, you were quite, you know, you were being open and quite honest in the moment with, Hey, you know what? I was having some feelings. I felt very angry about this whole thing. And then I really sat down and thought, and I thought about it and I contemplate, you know, why is he doing this? And realizing that I don't come from his perspective. I don't understand. So I can at least friendly in a friendly way, suggest a certain way to still show respect that doesn't disrespect the veteran, you know, first run, first responder community, but still gets the message across. Mm. And so, you know, to those guys, what I've gotten a lot of is like, Hey, do you know, Nate, you, you and Nate are really good friends. Right. And it's like, you know, special operations guys or guys like that. And then like, Hey, tell him that he doesn't speak for all of us. And like, I've gotten that on a few occasions. What would you say to guys that said that, you know, to guys from your brotherhood that would say something like that? I would that? say I never claim to do so. And I yeah. always make it known that I only speak for myself, but they don't seem to care or they don't seem to hear that message or they read a headline in an article or something that I said taken out of context. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Um, but a lot of those people are the ones that think I'm like pro protest, right? The anthem, or yeah. you know what I mean, or whatever. Or they don't even understand, you know, where all this stuff is coming from, and like, you know, or I don't even think about the fact that like they took an oath to defend the Constitution, not the flag or the anthem, right? You know, and the First Amendment is freedom of speech, and so like you don't have to like things. You don't have to be okay with somebody's protest, but like you did fight for that right. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. That's all yeah. I'm talking about. And that's who and who I'm speaking for is just me. Yeah. Um. You know, when I, I can't help what people write. Right. You know yeah. I mean? oh, no. You can't help what, what the media claim, says. Period. Yeah. What people claim about because I said something, it means this for the whole community. Like that's not up to me. Right. You know, I'm not running around wearing like. I'm not running for office, first of all. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like claim anything like that. Um, but it, honestly, a lot of people that have confronted me directly, which I would appreciate if you would just do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. But people don't do that because, you know, the, they, uh, they're afraid of like confrontation as much as they, everybody wants to act like a badass. Like, right. People are still afraid of confrontation. They don't like, they avoid confrontation. They don't want to, oh, yeah. they would just rather flake or, you know, um, or talk behind your back. Yeah, talk behind or, your back to somebody else or whatever. Yeah. And it's like uh, most of the people that have confronted me about it, which I respect way more, even guys that I served with that said things like, you know, you're a disgrace to the Green Beret. Yeah. They said it to me like, okay, like we can have that conversation. We can talk about it. That's what you, that's what you feel. I'm glad you came to me about that. Right. But I've had a specific gentleman who said that exactly, you know, and after he – we talked it through and I was like, look, man, I'm just trying to hear uh, other people out and I'm trying to solve a problem. I want to be, a, I continue to be a problem solver. Like what we did when we deployed, you know, we were, we were trying to solve problems. We we're trying to fix stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, and don't tell me that you uh, didn't fight alongside, especially if you're an SF, you didn't fight alongside people where you did not agree with their cultures and customs often or didn't understand them. And you thought, you know, I, you know, I don't even understand what we're doing here. And, um, you know, some of these people, like they're not listening, they're not trying, I don't trust them, Yeah. but you still would have conversation with them, work through something with them and uh, try to find a solution, try to help them um, do something in a more productive way. You know what I mean? Uh, cause a lot, cause, cause most of us did, you know what I mean? Most of us did. And for that, I, you know, I'm just like, look, if, if a great number of people in our country believe that, um, uh, this, the, the, the justice system needs to be fixed or improved upon, which right. I don't disagree with. Like we're America, we should be the best at, at everything. And we should always strive to be, we better. should always be seeking to improve even when we're really good, Yeah, which we are. We're a great, I love this country. It's the mm. best country, yep. but it can always be better. We can do more. All of us can do more. Like, why would you not try to help be a part of those solving those problems? Right. Um, instead of just saying, oh man, like, well, that's what that side says. You know, I, I back the blue no matter what. And I'm like, me too, man. I also back the military. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of shit bags in the military that do stupid stuff. I'm not supporting that. I'm yeah. not going to just be like, turn a blind eye when, when, when our guys make a mistake. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want that fixed. Yeah. I want it to be better. I want it to be improved, but I'm not saying that everybody in the military is bad you right. Know, right, to, to combat sort of, the, the the left side of things on this issue of like, you know, we're we're against the police, we're anti police. Like, come on, ninety nine percent of police officers are awesome. Oh you know? yeah, it's absolutely. a really hard job. You don't get paid yeah. shit, and, uh, and pay's right not now you're better. Yeah. You're right now you're demonized, man. Right, by a lot of people. It's a very tough job. You man. know, yeah. like God, I wouldn't want to wear that uniform and 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 and, and work in a, in a place like L A. In some of these oh. neighborhoods, man, like that's dangerous. Yeah. And we need that's the the, the reality is, is we need more people of color to wear those uniforms in the work in those neighborhoods and like, but we also need white people to wear those uniforms in those yeah. neighborhoods too. We need to like get past all this stuff. Right. And we um, need good in and it. work together with the communities because there is situations where cops that, uh, whether it's a lack of training or bad decision or yeah. whatever, like we can't just defend them regardless all the time. You know what I mean? There's it's situation by situation. Cause there is, there's been times where something shouldn't have happened and it yeah. did. And, um, you know, you took somebody's life and maybe they didn't do that bad of a thing right, <laughs> to yeah. deserve to warrant that. Right. Yeah. I had situations overseas and I'm, you know, one time in particular, I'm super lucky, uh, that, the uh, I didn't hit this person, but like I thought somebody was firing at me yeah. in a situation. Right. Um, and I, you know, it was a, it was just a, it was a crazy, crazy scenario. Right. right yeah. Um, but if I would have hit them and killed them, right. Yeah. If I'd have been responsible for that. Um, you would have lived with that for the rest of your life. I would live with that. But also like, I mean, I, I, I would, I would probably try to fight it in the sense of like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go down for this. I mean, I was genuinely scared and was in the middle of a firefight and I didn't know what was what and I was trying to trying to decipher I'm trying to do the right thing but like sometimes that happens like mistakes happen so like yeah. there's that side of it too of like you know you can see in some of those instances like that fear that an officer maybe has and yeah uh, it's just complicated man it's not simple it's not like cops aren't out there just trying to kill people yeah you know it's the stress of that it's situation like you've crazy. got you got like 0.4 second decisions you know totally. where you're making that decision on the edge of your life and sometimes and and making the wrong one doesn't take away from the fact that you still need to make the right one right you yeah. don't go just go you don't just excuse it but at the same time you're saying like hey listen you could be a good decision maker and in the moment still make a bad decision it's yeah, still possible. Right, right, right. Oh, we right. make mistakes every day. It's yeah. just human nature. These are just, uh, the stakes are high, right? Yeah. And uh, it's a tough one. But yeah, the, but then I've seen plenty of videos too where it's like, you know, yeah, cops doing something. You're like, I can't believe that guy is yeah. just beating that person. You yeah. know what I mean? At yeah. that To that extent, I don't care what kind of weapon they had or whatever. Right. I'm just like, if it, you know, in my situation, maybe it's because of my background and 
and our, you know, our, our, our background in the military and serving overseas and being in combat, I just feel like we'd be like, yeah, it's not, that's not the way you do things. You yeah. Know it's what not I mean? okay. Right. It's not okay. So this like, it's just not, it's just not that simple. Yeah. And right. It's as simple as that. <laughs> And I, I think that's a great point that you're making within the context of the you know discussion that we're having about the Kaepernick situation is it's not that simple. No. It, if it was simple, we'd have it solved. Right. I mean, simple problems, there are simple solutions to. Yeah, absolutely. Complicated problems, obviously, they're difficult. So that's why it's not just a, you know, like any major issue in our country that's been uh, debated for decades or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's all it's because they're complicated. You know, it's not just it's not black and white. It's not one way or the other. It's not good, evil, right, wrong. Right. It's like all of those things. Sometimes it's some of this and some of that, and you know, uh, b- bad decisions and not holding people accountable for those bad decisions. But also, why did they make that decision? Because they were afraid. Because in this situation before X has happened, and because they didn't pull the trigger. You know, maybe one of their their buddies got hurt. I, there's like a million scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. We're not perfect as humans. We just aren't. No. Yeah. And it's just not that. Yeah, it's just not that simple. Yeah. So you know, I kind of wanted to wrap up, but I wanted to ask you, you know, a question about you know moving into the future and the forward goals. You know, we had it's been a few years since we did your project. I think you know, um, you're obviously in a different place now than you were at the time. And I'm still in LA. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, uh, Tim, you're but, so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the white claw flowing, so he's feeling more uh, honest yeah, right I've now. Had one yeah. white claw. <laughs> he's had one. And I'm just like, <laughs> freaking crazy. <laughs> I've had to tell him to sit down like ten times, get off the table. No, you haven't. People have been listening. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> They're like, we actually we know that to be false because yeah. we have video Go on. Go back right to now. the tape. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, what do you, I've said so many times that, you know, reintegration is the key to the project and kind of addressing that and building the bridge. And that's why I'm going to have some civilians on as well on this podcast, uh, because I, I want to, Ew. <laughs> disgusting, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know you want to you want to bridge that gap and yeah. bring the two communities closer and make them feel involved. And so, what are the goals for you going into the future? And how do you want to inspire not only veterans but others within the community, just period that you work in, to you know grow and to continue to strive for better? Yeah, and not just veterans, civilians too. Like right, that whole the community, the tribe, but that's like the American community. Yeah, for me. Um, you know, one of those ways is using the medium that I'm passionate about pursuing to um, to shed light on on our similarities and differences, right? And just yeah. more similarities in that we are different, and that's uh, that's what makes us the same. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm very lucky to to host a show last year for NFL Network, and we're going to do it again this year. Oh, cool! Called Indivisible. That's uh, oh, awesome. I didn't know you guys were going for season. two. Yeah, That's we're doing awesome. a season Good. two. We just found out like last week, and Great. um, not 100 percent sure the cities we're going to yet. But anyway, in that show, it was like you know, kind of an Anthony Bourdain style show where I got to go to six different cities and sit down with community leaders and fans and current. NFL players, former NFL players, and talk about issues that are relevant to those cities, but also how, like how football sort of brings us together, right? Yeah. There's a lot of things that bring us together um, in these communities. And if you get people in a room that have different um, perspectives and beliefs and get them talking about something face to face, not behind social media or mainstream media or whatever, uh, we all tend to. Uh, show a little more respect, but also really listen, right? You know, and are able to connect to that to that person. Not always. Sometimes you just don't, and that's yeah. o- that's okay too. But there's at least a, a level of respect, and I think more empathy um, when you really hear that person tell their story and why they believe what they believe. Right? Was that a takeaway from that first season? Like, did you yeah. feel? Was I that learned a, a ton, man. Yeah, I learned a ton. Like, I'm still. I'm just learning about how little I know <laughs> more and more, which is a little <laughs> disheartening. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. But it's uh, and not just about you know uh, social justice, about anything, right? Um, but it's super cool to 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 hear people 
share about, you know, why they, why they stand for what they stand for or kneel for what they kneel for, whatever. Right. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's kind of cool. And, uh, sometimes it's sad and sometimes it's like, ah, oh, I didn't even thought about that. And it's so obvious, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and it's cool for me also, uh, since I represent the entire veteran community. <laughs> just kidding, but like <laughs> just share, ever get done saying for, for, that you for don't. Me to, yeah. Yeah. No, Actually, for me I to do. share my experience in the military and why, just as an example, why um, certain symbols are very special to me and sacred to me. Right, and I think to a lot of us that that served, and even even those that didn't, um, and tell them my story and my journey. Yeah, and for see to see people that thought they had nothing in common with me, you know, to go like, okay, I never, I never thought about that, honestly. And it's, sometimes it's surprising because really smart people, but they just hadn't um, put themselves in anybody else's shoes, you know, especially someone in shoes who's sort of on the other side of a, a debate or a topic that's not an extremist. I mean, like, I think it'd be hard for anybody of color to put themselves in the shoes of a, a white supremacist because, right, yeah. you know, like, it's just whatever it's completely but, different but yeah. someone that's got conservative values and ideals maybe that's that's you know a, a white person from x place and uh you know for them and maybe something um uh, they were maybe they were raised a certain way brought up a certain way to think a certain way you know what i mean right. and you could talk about that with religion or any other topic and you could sort of understand like you don't have to agree with or like but you can understand like okay like I, I, I get why they feel that way and why they think that way now right. that I've heard them kind of tell that whole story. And, uh, so that's what I want to do, man. And some of that's narrative scripted films and some of that is unscripted, you know, series or whatever, or podcast. I mean, there's a million ways you can do that. Yeah. Um, or through photography or any form of art, you can really share perspective and stories. And like, that's the biggest thing I think our country needs right now. Um, we're starved for that kind of content, I believe. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of ma- bad stuff ma- out ma- there. Major networks still believe that we're only starved for the real housewives of wherever, you yeah. know? <laughs> and I think that that's not true. I think that some people and some, yeah, sometimes we just want to f- switch off and like, I'm a big sports fan, man. Sometimes I just want to watch college football. We're already five we're minutes into a game yeah. right now. My bad. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. But I mean, seriously, sometimes yeah. I just want to switch off and like have a white claw and watch football. <laughs> that's a great, that's a yeah. great night. Yeah. But I'm still, I am straight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're but, like, wait, this story is not lining up with yeah, the story they told earlier. Really <laughs> sipping white claws, man. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they, that's, that's what I want to do, man. That's how I want to tie it all together. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know, that, theme of storytelling you know i've seen it with the project so often it's like but you don't realize how different people are until you get into that you know individual setting with them and especially in the veteran community you know i kind of assumed almost i don't know if i just assumed like everybody was yeah, wearing no, a real tree too. hat and you know like going Dude, out hunting we're the, after. we're the most uh diverse microcosm in the country Super. i really believe that yeah we have everybody oh yeah in that is worn the camouflage everybody like you'll find it <laughs> yeah you'll find that person it doesn't matter what you, you will find uh a person that believes anything and is you know been through all this stuff from all over the place yeah um, it doesn't matter it's uh but some of the greatest levels of acceptance as well yeah exactly within that community. that's the kind of the point i think that's that, yeah. ma- that makes it really cool that experience is whether it was in basic training or on a deployment or whatever you know you had people on your team that you were just like i don't get this person at all i don't know where they're coming from i don't believe what they believe i think totally different um but when the bulls start flying because you went through that training together and you learn to respect them at some levels and um understand that they're probably willing to take a bullet for you too. Like you just get past it. You know right. I mean? Yeah, totally. So Nate, is there anything that you want to specifically promote that's coming up or do you have anything coming up in the future real close that you wanted to talk about or Dude, we did it already, man. Yeah. I just want to, I just want to promote, um, uh, um, uh, good listening, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I want to promote, uh, uh, our, uh, I don't know, man. I just want to promote love. (laughs) (laughs) 
and understanding. It's all uh, you know, What's so fun about peace, love, and understanding? On the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great I song. I love it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's actually, it is funny, though. All yeah. that peace, love, and understanding are really funny, too. So it's okay. Yeah. yeah you can laugh at everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We should. Yeah. Bridging the gap, it's so important, you know, that and storytelling makes that possible. So go ahead and, and uh, this has been a great podcast, man. I appreciate you for coming on and, um, you know, episode four. I'm sorry, it wasn't one. Uh, <laughs> trying to build Ridiculous. the social media base a little. Um, but I, I, disgusting. I, I really wanted to have you on because Nate's a real close friend of mine and I know that you know, a lot of people kind of feel that they've seen him through different perspectives on Twitter and Facebook, but it's important to hear his perspective and for him to really be able to explain himself. And, um, so it's been a privilege to have you brother. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I love you too, bro. I love you too. Yeah. I will. Yeah. There was a lot of love going on around right now. What? Uh, (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Army ball story, and then this not looking good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cut, cut, cut this, bro. Yes. We're in a hotel room. <laughs> bed, this two beds. Two beds. <laughs> this is not a good look. <laughs> the people outside of the hotel room are like, oh, yeah, this sounds this super weird, shady. man. <laughs> Doing uh, some kind of TV show. <laughs> <laughs> bedroom. <laughs> it's not a good look. Uh, well, at Nate Boyer 37 on Ooh, Instagram. That's yeah, correct. Dude, I remember. Yeah. I'll never forget <laughs> your number <laughs> when I saw you run out of that field. <laughs> <laughs> Tears. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this, and then uh, I'm on Facebook, Nate Boyer. Uh, he's doing some awesome things. He's going to be on Mayans season two. Um, he's got a role on that. And then in, we got season two coming up for Indivisible. That's right, baby. NFL Network. Nate, thanks for coming on, bro. Tim. Appreciate you. It was an on hour. <laughs> on hour <laughs> British. Yeah. It was a very colorful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it. This has been the Veterans Project Podcast with our founder, Tim K. Check us out at www.thevetsproject.com, on Instagram at The Veterans Project, Facebook, The Veterans Project, and Twitter at project underscore veteran. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, our legacies are the mission.